Hello everyone, welcome back to some more of The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Last time, a great, whole great turnabout actually happened here. Um, let me fix my microphone for a sec, there. <clears throat> so, as for what actually happened, <sighs> it's a doozy. Starting off with, we, we talked to the um, last three witnesses about what they saw, and as it turns out, that wasn't entirely true. Look, it... Look, it was true, but it could also have not have been. See, one of the witnesses found this pocket watch at the scene. And although it looks broken, we combined it with the... Uh, here. The policeman figurine that's actually a key for it. And as it turns out, it's a tuner for this watch. And, and as we hear it from Gina, um, Inspector Gregson winds this pocket watch without fail every single day. Meaning that... Meaning that this raises the possibility of him dying at five o'clock, not um, not on that day, but any day prior. Well, not, not, I'm not sure if it was any day prior, but it could. It basically, he could have been killed prior to this moment, and and we basically end up having to explain a bunch of other stuff. For example, where's the what was the gunshot that everyone heard? Well, could it be someone tying a lot of, tying a firecracker to. Where is it? Here, the candles at the scene. They could have just tied it there. Wait, and then, yeah, they could have just um, tied it here. Then, at, then, as they were waiting for the candle to dive down, they put Gregson's body there and so on and set up the scene. That way, when, and then left. That way, when this went down long enough, the, um, the stuff would blow. The firecrackers would blow up, sound like a gunshot, alerting everyone to the crime. <sighs> essentially, the killer. We we pro essentially, we prove the possibility that the killer could have killed Craigson long before this moment, and then set everything up as is now. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it is with that that we in we turn to what um Gregson was actually investigating, the red-headed league, and when you know it, we found these two gentlemen that Sholmes was, um. Sent, sent to the police office and officer ugh, I'm messing this up <laughs> sent to the police station I don't know why I said police officer or whatever and uh yeah we brought them here and apparently they have seen the man in the photograph they've seen wait I'm sorry let me read this for a second uh let me just make sure I got everything right yeah 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 uh-huh. Okay, yeah. So, they'll testify about if they met Gregson or not. So, yeah. Sorry, it's been like a week or two since I last recorded a video on this. So, yeah. I'm kind of rusty. Um, Forgive me if I'm not like automatically back in the groove or whatever. Um, Anywho, I guess with that being said, let's kind of get started here. <clears throat> with their testimony. The man. In the photograph. We had more than 1,000 red-headed people assembling the park on Lime Street that day. But I don't recognize them. I call that the man in this photograph. I couple? No, I don't remember him. Obviously, he's dead now, but I assure you, he was not in the park. Hello, this victim has nothing to do with us. You have a lot to answer for, Peppino. It is your fault that we caught, got caught in the first place. You've given sworn testimony that the man in this photograph was not present. Can you be certain? Oui, oui, I am quite certain. We did not interview this man. Nobody looking, looking like this that came to the park. This I can promise. It must be noted that you've been arrested for a grand deception, however. Accordingly, this court has little confidence in your assurances. Ha! <laughs> With this attitude, we get to nowhere, huh? He's really a sulking now. This confidential document was obtained directly from Skullin Yard. It records an entry from the press inspector's private diary dated before a day before the incident. It reads, Lime Street, Red-Headed League, Undercover. Ah, 
I have an answer. Maybe there was another similar event in the park on the day in question, eh? That is ridiculous. There's no question that Inspector Gregson was investigating the Red-Headed League. Which means it's quite possible that when he was killed, that's when he was killed. Very well. The defense may proceed with the cross-examination now. Ah, yes, my lord. Yeah, all right. Let's see what this guy has to offer me. Us. A thousand people assemble. They will call a man the photograph. Okay. Don't have any evidence that directly um, messed their claims up. Hmm. Oh, yeah. We had more than 1,000 redheaded people on Lime Street that day. But I don't recall the man's photograph. You're gonna show you he was not in the park. How do you know that exactly? But according to what you said, you spoke with a thousand or more people that day. Yeah, how exactly do you know who was and wasn't there? It was a thousand people. We such through. My eyes were burning by the end of the day. Surely then you can't actually remember every single face. How are you so certain? That this particular man wasn't present. Normally, the red hair is a very distinctive eye. But not when you have one thousand red heads crowding around. Then it's just an eyesore. But if there was some other information you could have give us, maybe that we could be cold. That is not the line, Peppino. Remember, we do not remember him. We are sure that that fact, huh? If there was a man with a red piece, but his mustache did not match the color, then I do not think I could have forgotten him. Cosmo said these two had only been shown that photograph and they'd been told nothing else at all. But what if I fed them just one other detail about the victim? For example... Actually, yeah, what I... I don't think his name would matter to them that much. Um, uh, his profession? Nah. If they found a detective, they probably would have turned tail and run in. I don't really... If he was investigating him, I don't think he would have just told them. Two sufficient tips. He always eats them. I can certainly appreciate that by that just knowing the man had red hair wouldn't help you remember in this situation. But, what if I told you that the man was always munching on a packet of fish and chips? Do you remember a man who was eating it incessantly? Not really. I was looking at the, head, the heads the heads of the applicants. I wouldn't have noticed the fish and chips any more than the caviar and smoked salmon. Or a spaghetti, me. I love the spaghetti. Really? I had no idea. Okay. Tell them again what you said, you said before, Bebino. See, si, couple. See, si. I say it again and again. Alright. The victim has nothing to do with us. Is that a new statement? No. Um. I guess. Hold it! Just try something else. Uh, hmm. His name or his profession? I guess his name wouldn't really matter to them since they heard like a thousand names that day. I mean, his profession is a detective. Excuse me. What the heck did I just do? Uh, what was that? I just clicked it by accident. That's nice. Though. Okay. Um, all right. Let me turn back on the recording when we get when we get to the line. And we are back. Okay. Good. Is it recording? Yes. Okay. Let's look at his profession this time, I guess. <clears throat> I can certainly appreciate that. Just knowing the route with red hair wouldn't help you. But what if I told you that the man in the red hair piece was actually a detective? The man in the photograph is a detective. Yes. It would appear that he found your notice in the newspaper, suspicious and decided to investigate incognito. 
totally, but uh, this changes nothing. What was that? Excuse me! Something to add, Mr. DeRossi? See? Uh, si. I am always adding something. Parmesan, olive oil, pepper. What I mean is... Did you not agree with your friend's last remark by any chance? Eh? What did the artist to say? About the detective? Yes, that. Keep your mouth shut, Papino. You have said enough already. But the why, couple? What's the problem? There was a man who said, uh... I am an inspector from Scotland Yard. What? Good lord! Yeah, he just revealed his identity like that? Order! Order! Explain this vault face at once in your, in your testimony, witness. It's simple. A man who was after the box, the box said to us that there was no such man. My die! What are you saying, couple? Have you forgotten, eh? I have forgotten nothing. Nobody likes this game to the park. Basta, couple. Basta. You beat me at the many things, not two. The memory and the meals. Like I said, when it's time to eat at the pasta, no one is the faster. But Sua interferes for me in every other way, so shut up. Objection! Uh. Oh, Todd, the damage is done. Indeed it is, sir. Uh... We. So was a man who came to the park and said he was an inspector from Scotland Yard. However, he looked nothing like the man in the photograph. He was someone else. How can you be so sure? Because, to start with, his face was completely different. See, it's true, it's true. The man who came was a younger. His face was a clean shaven, his eyes were sadder, his chin was thinner. No resemblance whatsoever then. Anyway, I was not going to be fooled. I took the obvious precaution and said to him, If you're really a detective, so it's the proof. See, si, see, si, the capo here, he doesn't take out no nonsense, eh? But he was well prepared. He said he had identification. I... Identification? You mean, official police inspector's identification? That is most unconvincing. Sorry, my lord. Council, uh, no incognito inspector would offer his identification for inspection. It is uh, quite out of the question. Definitely. Why would he expose his true identity like that? That's what I'm saying. Clearly, the papers were fake. Certo capo, you are a genius. As we say in Italia, it takes a thief to, it takes a thief to recognize another, aye? Right? And, uh, what happened after he announced that he was a detective? It became very annoying. He said, you are under investigation. So I took his paper from him and chased him out of the park. It was fantastico! And look, here is the identification! So you stole it from the man? Yet he had it coming. It made us very scared. But he was not who he said he was. Indeed, the person described in the script not appear to be have behaved as a true inspector would. However, I believe it will be prudent for these identification papers to be entered into evidence. Hmm. But I like them. Alright, let's look at these papers and see what we got. Metropolitan Police Warrant Card. Well, I suppose we should see what this inspector's identification looks like inside. Wow, words. Yes, it definitely looks fake, doesn't it? Out of interest, uh, what name is given? Probably just something like plucked out of the air. <laughs> it's, uh, Tobias Gregson. Wait, what? 
This Scotland Yard insignia looks genuine to me. But how? And the department and identification number it's held all correct as well. Since when have you known those? D you mean to say... I know it seems incredible, but yes. I think this is a genuine identification book, identification book issued by Scotland Yard. But that's... That's unbelievable! This is the real thing after all? Yeah... Somebody... J the killer jacked his identification from him and then just used it to investigate... What? Really? <sighs> this victim is nothing to do with us. I don't think that's correct, because this is Gregson's identification badge, so... Huh. I'm just thinking, this isn't... Nope, that's, that's the statement we gotta present on. There, yeah, I guess... Objection! Yeah, okay, yeah. So I guess that had to have been Gregson, because that was the re that that identification card is the real deal. I wonder if I could ask you to examine this identification book very closely. Miss Lestrade? Why, Miss Lestrade? What is your intention here, Counsel? Is this really a fake, or is it genuine? That's the question. Which we can't answer ourselves. Objection! Don't be ridiculous. No Scotland Yard detective would allow his or her identification card to be stolen. Ah, uh, ah, uh, that is the bosses. No question about it. It can't be. As I suspected, the undercover detective who attended the Red Headed League's enrollment on the day in question was the real Inspector Gregson, carrying out an incognito investigation. Z Order! Order! But, if the boss had his identification stolen, he would have reported it straight away. I mean, he was always on me about it. If you lose some app, report it at once, you'd say. Could it be, then, that the inspector was physically unable to report it? Physically? Aye! What are you are saying? Unable to... You... You're not suggesting. Yes. It's quite possible that he was killed before we had the chance to report his identif identification stolen. No! Order! Order! The defense posits that the victim was killed the day before his body was discovered, at a different location. Do you two have anything to say about that? Uh, he knows nothing. Pull yourself together, Fabino. Mon dieu, you can behave a little more like a master criminal than that, non? Oh, now I wish I'd returned to Italia. Z Stop crying, Fabino, please. Otherwise, I. I. Lume, stop your whining and start talking. Oh. I believe the call we need to hear your story. I know nothing. I done nothing. But you will tell everything, or face the worst possible outcome. Uh. You will dry your eyes and testify again. About those identification papers, and the precise circumstances under which you came by them. Ugh. For crying out loud, literally. The, the truth is, we took him prisoner and kept him for the, the, night, the night of our secret hideout. Oh yeah, you took somebody prisoner, you kidnapped him? Even though I didn't ask, think 
I didn't think he was a real detective. I was too scared to let him go that day, just in case. We took the man's identification from him and shot him in the room next to ours. There might have been a little tussle, but we did them no harm. And the next morning, we let him go. He spent the night in a nice room. It was nothing like a prison, really. Yeah, you kidnapped a whole man? This... This is outrageous. You imprisoned the man? But... No! See! No! It, it was not like a prison. He was uh, uh, very comfortable and uh, uh, calm and uh, uh, happy. Aye, Capo? It... It was never part of my plan. I swear it. Ah, so you think it was my fault, huh? Just because I got the death of the ferry wrong? You just buy one little a day. I do not think it was your fault, Pepino. I know it. No, 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 but per favore, capo. It is not the fair. You shall have plenty of time for squabbling back at the prison, gentlemen. Ugh, I don't believe this. How could I have he, he been a real detective? Else for the defense. Proceed with cross-examination. So, on the day before the incident, Gregson spent the night confined in this pair's hideout. <sighs> Alright. We took him prisoner. Why did you take him prisoner? Do, do you realize what you're saying? You have to believe me. I never intended for that to happen. You never intended for that to happen? How do you just accidentally kidnap somebody and put them in a prison for a night? And I'm sure the detective did not intend it either. Yes, do, do you think? But there was nothing else I could do. See, si, nothing else. This was the first time, this was the first crime for the couple. He was at the end of his wits. I have told you before, Papino, that is not the way to describe a criminal mastermind. What about this hideout of yours? An old empty house behind the park on Lime Street. We rented the place for a two a days. It was inspired by it was an inspired idea by the couple here. An impulsive idea, I would say. No, 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 not impulsive. Inspired. I couple? What am I supposed to say to that, huh, Papino? And it was on in the house described that you could find Inspector Gregson, was it? Ugh, we. Oui. But you have to remember, I was under the impression that he was a pretender, not a real inspector. That doesn't quite add up though. If you didn't think the man was a real inspector, there would have been no reason to take him prisoner, would there? None, you are right. But we couldn't be completely certain. When we just let him go. I feel like that's a lie because then how, why do you, how do you, how do he not report his identification stolen then? Um, what do you mean by a little tussle exactly? Hmm? Buff. It was nothing. Just a minor incident. The false inspector. He was a real piece of the work. I couple. What happened? Ah, it was a disaster. We gave him a nice room, and what does he do, huh? In the middle of the night, he tries to escape to the Ventolore. Wait, what did I just say? Ventolore, wow, that is... That actually sounds bad, wow. Vin, what is it? Ventilatore. There. Wow, Ventolore. That's gonna be one of my bad moments. Can you blame him? We chased them, being sur. And we caught them again. Can you blame us? Wait, you... You didn't... Shoot the man in your haste, did you? So, who do you think we are? Of course not. I simply caught, the, caught all of them again and took them back to the room. What was that? Excuse me! And, you, you have a high voice? What? I didn't know you had a high voice. Seriously? 
Mr. De Mr. De Rossi. Mr. De Rossi, is something wrong? I? Me? Something Mr. De Ro Mr. De Rosso said seemed to make you, uh, hmm. Well, it seemed to make you act even more strangely than usual. What was that all about? Capolo, at times like that, you don't want to have the capo after you, believe me. And I speak from a personal exp experience. Personal experience? That is enough, that point, Pepino. There is no need to say any more. The truth is, the night before we put on the red-headed leak plan to action, I was as scared. It was not a fair to the capo, but I, tr I tried to run away. It's a shame you didn't manage it. But the capo here, yeah, he came after me like a turbine, huh? And he dragged me back to the house, kicking and screaming. I still have the bruises to prove it. I capo. Bruises, you say? Aye. You want to see, huh? You want to see my uh, fantastic uh, bruises? That's enough, my pepino. No one wants to look at any part of you. What that to do, huh? I assure you or I don't. I assure you or I don't. You do. Now. Jeez, Cosmo. Aurora, if everyone wants to see, then I do it. Echo, you see? It's still a very visible, huh? huh? That... That red ring around your neck? You got that when you were dragged back to the house? See, si, the capo, sometimes he is very rough. I said that's enough. The pino's neck has nothing to do with what we are talking about here. You have my word. Hmm, yes, uh, what is your opinion, counsel? That, my friends, is very important. Mr. De Rossi, I'm going to have to ask you to amend your testimony with the tales about that mark on your neck. As for why, well, you'll see later. Hi, couple. You see, everyone is interested in what I say, huh? Ugh. Very well. You will amend your testimony as requested, Mr. De Rossi. And that, my friend, is what we need. He tried to escape, but he put him like that. But... If we look at the picture, there ain't no mark on his neck. Completely clean. Objection! There's a discrepancy there. So, the day before the body was discovered, Inspector Gregson was taken prisoner while working incognito. No, no, it was not like that. It was oddly a prison. It was an invitation to stay. It was only. However you describe it, there's one glaring inconsistency that remains. What inconsistency is this, Counsel? I would ask the court to look closely at this photograph of the victim, Inspector Rexon. You will see that there is no red ring visible around his neck. Eh? But that, that makes no sense. It was me who took out the collar off the man in question in the morning, and I saw the red bruises on his neck, just like I have. Given that the mark is still clearly visible on this witness's neck, we'd expect to see bruising on the victim who was put in the collar more recently than Mr. Ross De Rossi. Uh, indeed, that is most peculiar. But we, we are tell you, huh? Huh? We say this from the beginning, many times. We, oui, Peppino's right. The man in the photograph is someone different to the man we held captive at the night. He's right, it is someone different. Odar, Odar! It would appear, then, that on the day before the incident, the man who visited the park on Lime Street posing as incoming to Inspector was not Inspector Rexon at all. Objection! If that's true, however, how do you explain the Inspector's identification? This is a genuine identification book issued by Scotland Yard. It's inconceivable that someone could have stolen such an important item from the inspector. The prosecution made up that assertion itself. <clears throat> and we also know that the inspector had a note about the red-headed league in his diary for that day. Which surely means we can't divorce the two events completely. 
The inconsistency noted by the defence is most troubling. If it were the real Inspector Rexon, who these two redhead gentlemen encountered, the fact that no bruising can be seen around his neck defies explanation. But equally, if they enc actually encountered an imposter, how did that person come to it and be in possession of the real inspector's identification? Does the defense have some plausible explanation, counsel? This whole thing defies explanation. It is for precisely these occasions that we keep meticulous notes in the court record, Mr. Narahodo. Because those are the facts, and the facts cannot lie. No, the facts can't lie. Even when they point to something so incredible, it's almost unbelievable. And truly, it is. Well, my lord, the true identity of the person who turned up in the park for the Redhead League's enrollment is revealed by information in the court record, I believe. Good gracious! Very tantalizing, Mr. Naruhodo. So, why don't you help us all to see whether, whatever truth it is that you apparently seen? Who exactly was this inspector that appeared before Mr. Rosso and Mr. DeRossi? An imposter. Though it seems incredible, I admit, the undeniable facts prove to only one thing. Since no bruising can be seen on the victim's neck, the person who these two redhead men took over that day can also be Inspector Gregson. In other words, your whole argument up to now has been a waste of time. Objection! On the contrary, I haven't finished. What? There's no bruising on the victim's neck, so the question immediately posed next is, who exactly was the man in the park on Lime Street found to be carrying Inspector Gregson's identification? See, see, that's all right. We tell the same story every time. Whoever this man was, the capo dragged him from a pillar to a post with a with a dog collar. Oh, you pepino! I was not so harsh as you say, huh? So who was that false inspector, huh? Who was he? Clearly, the defense has an idea about that. About the true identity of the man Poe. These two imprisoned that night. Poe? Where did Poe come from? <laughs> I must ask for the count the defense to elaborate post haste. Who did the witnesses encounter the park posing as Inspector Rexy? Well, they actually mentioned this a lot earlier on in the case. You just wouldn't notice it. Um, if we scroll through the court record, there is only one person here that has a verifiable red ring around his nose. Gossip, as you can see. Take that! Goodness me! Is... isn't that... One of the witnesses who was in the stand in this very courtroom earlier today. A nameless man who only whose only occupation appears to be peddling hearsay to passers-by. Objection! What on earth would a street seller be doing with the police inspector's identification papers? Witnesses, is this the man or not? What has happened to his lip? Ah. See. This man is not for the Red Hill League, huh? He's looking for the Twisted Lip League, no? Perhaps rather than making such a rash claim next time, you should bite your you should bite your lip instead. It seems improbable, yes, but one undeniable fact remains. During his testimony earlier, I noticed something around the man's neck. A red ring of bruising. Eh? What? The defense demands that Mr. Gossip be brought back to the stand. Order! Order! Bailiff! Bring the aforementioned witnesses back to the courtroom. Immediately! Yep, that's it. Well, I never... An undeniable ring of bruising indeed. And identical to without the witness beside him. Now, what's going on here, huh? I've always had this me. It's a birthmark, isn't it? A birthmark, you say? 
I assume the reason you've been recalled to the sun has been explained to you. I um a smart about an inspector again. Well I'm telling you, you've got it all wrong as usual. You're denying all knowledge of it? Well, of course I am. Are you trying to kill me with all, kill me with all this nonsense, huh? Well, at least you'll have more stories to peddle on back and back on Fresno Street, won't you? Now, we're going to need you to justify again. And you, Mr. DeRosso and Mr. DeRossi, I'm sure you'll be cooperate, won't you? Do we have any choice? We are in the bigger trouble, eh, couple? That's quite enough dilatory chatter. Proceed with the testimony. Alright. Let's see what we got. The man who claimed to be an inspector that day was not... Oh, sorry. The man who claimed to be an inspector that day was definitely not this man. He's right, see? You think we would have forget these grand lips, huh? Well, I never leave Fresno Street, alright? I have no interest in any red-headed league. I'm all alone in the world, me. I have no kinfolk or nothing. Why would I be involved in something like that? Just look at me, huh? Does it look like I could care, care off a disguise with a face like this? I would, it would certainly appear that we have the wrong man. What have I been telling you, huh? There was no need for this pointless testimony. Ugh. That's right. I'm just a simple peddler, remember. Fresno Street's all I know. How would I have come by a police inspector's identification book, huh? Well, yes, that's hard to explain, but... <sighs> a brief cross-examination, I think, Council. Very brief. Ugh. Isn't there, any, isn't there anyone in this courtroom who thinks I might be on to something? I stand steadfastly at your side, always, as always, Mr. Naruto. Alright. Claim to be inspector that day. Think we'd forget his lips. I never leave Fresno Street. All alone in the world. Look at me, just like I could carry off a sky with a face like this. Huh. Okay. Two things to gotta with me. First off is this one. Why do you never leave Fresno Street? That's weird. This one sticks out, because you have no kinfolk. And this one, this one kind of looks like the, the stuff we're supposed to disprove. I guess let's look at them all in order. So, you've heard of the Red-Headed League, had you? You don't get a name like Gossip for nothing, huh? It's my business, no, it's going off in town. So, I sold that tasty tidbit to a fair few redheads that came past me. Just between, just between us, I haven't got so much to cough up for it. Well... He does have a very red nose, if that counts. Who knows? But, as you can see, my own hair's not got a hint of red in it. And in any case, Fresno Street's my patch. They won't catch me sliding off to some other part of town. No, sir. So? Not likely. Excuse me! Mr. DeRosso. Uh. Ah, oui. Can I help you? Did Mr. Gossip's words now just now lead, lead you to remember something relevant, perhaps? It was the other day when I was looking for a place near the park, a small house or something. To be the headquarters of your Red League, yes. I visited an housing agent on Lime Street, and there I saw him. This man was paying money to the agent. What? Mr. Mr. Gossip with a housing agent? We? Oui. He had some kind of contact in his hand, and they were clearly discussing terms. But no, 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 no! You, 
You're mistaken, John. Ah, but I've left Fresno Street, me. But like I said before, you've mistaken me for someone else. Someone with the same face. No, no, the couple is right. I remember, I remember that too. It was a paying the man with the banknotes. With notes? L l like I said, uh, that was that wasn't me. I was curious why this man with the dirty clothes had so much money. So I looked at the name in the papers, and the name was what the name was written, Mr. Gossip. No, no, this the man. He lies. He tells that he has no name, but in fact his name is Hugh Boone. Huh? He's better than Mr. Gossip, I think. See? Yeah. Is your room? I'm a peddler of tidbits of information, like I said. On Fresno Street, and that's that. I... I don't much like to folk talking about my personal life. Hmm. Indeed. And it is not the intention of the court to invade the privacy of witnesses. Very well. I shall respect your wishes, sir. The aforementioned name shall be redacted from all court records of the trial. Assuming no objections. Objection. Yes! Objection! Instantaneously objection! I'm sorry, my lord, but the defense does object. Because the name just mentioned has a very deep significance to this case. Good gracious! Do, do you similarly object, Mr. Osogi? Prosecutor Osogi. As it happens, my lord. That particular name has already been mentioned in today's proceedings. Well, I never. In what capacity? Hugh Boone. The name of the leaseholder of the room. Let me put this very simply. The, 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 the victim's body was discovered in your rented room. I suggest, sir, that you stop talking. Well, alright. I suppose that might be the case, huh? I... So your real name is Hugh Boone? Well, just between us, I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but there's no finer peddler of tempets in town. So I, I happen to be able to afford a grubby little room in a falling down back street townhouse. You do? Who are you peddling from? And once every six months, I go and pay the rent to the agent on Lime Street. I, I remember now, and there were two vulgar redheads in there last time. I, if I the rust is a vulgar, is not the me. Sink again, Pepino. Why didn't you bring this up before? It's like I told you already. I don't like talking about my personal life. I'm a tidbit peddler as far as everyone else is concerned. No fuss. You will update your testimony to include this most surprising revelation, Mr. Boone. You know, why do I keep thinking of the sexy Boutel? Lafcadio Boone, like, seriously. Uh, for must. So the leaseholder on Scotland Yard has been looking for us since the body was discovered. Has been here under our noses all along. And I rent the room for what difference it makes. I have no kinfolk or nothing. Wait! Where was it? It was some it was one of the stuff we found in the room. Uh, we either found the candle, this, this, this. Yeah! Miss Vigil was in the thing. <clears throat> oh, but he didn't have no kin, folk. That's not true. Objection! If you have no kin, folk, as you put it, then explain why, why is that among the, sparse, among the sparse furnishings we found this photograph in the room. Ah... Uh, I presume, as you've been renting the room, that this photograph belongs to you, does it not? Oh, um, uh, well... <clears throat> Mr. Boone, drop the pretense and tell the court exactly who you really are. 
I, I, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I'm a peddler. I, I keep telling you so. You really don't need to bother with me. Please, just, just leave us alone. As the man says, leave us alone. Whatever the truth about this is about this man's life, it has no bearing on this case. Because it's simply not possible that he impersonated Inspector Gregson. Objection! How can you be so sure? Just look at the man. No amount of disguise could ever hide those un unmissable features. Objection! But what if we were to look at this the other way around? What do you mean? Yes, Counselor, what do you mean? Well, there's no denying that Mr. Boone's lip is very prominent indeed. But consider the possibility that his prominent lip is itself part of an elaborate disguise. <coughs> then, hiding that prominent feature, in other words, revealing his true face, would make an utterly impenetrable disguise. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Hugh Boone? Ah... Uh... Good witness! Are you still hiding the truth from us from this court? If if that's a disguise then underneath it, his true identity must be Yes, that's right. There's really only one person you could really be. My lord, the defense believes it can reveal Mr. Boone's true identity to the court. No. Please. No. Very well then, Counsel. What is the true identity of this peddler who goes simply by the name of Gossip on the Street? Well, it'd have to be Daily Vigil. Which, which, actually, funnily enough, funnily enough, Gossip actually looks like him. Like, if you look at the hair, they still have the swirly hair. Swirly hair. The eyebrows that are like, that have like those cut up lines. He kind of has them too. Um. His clothes look a bit similar. Well, yeah, the, the undershirt looks a bit similar, I guess. Yeah. Take that! That's actually a clever way of looking at that. Your real name is actually, uh, Mr. Visual, isn't it? Mr. Daily Visual. <laughs> I don't recall that name, Counsel. Uh, who is this, Mr. Vigil? It's not my. It's the name I encountered yesterday, my lord. It has to do with. This, it has to do with a certain client of Mr. Herlock Sholmes. A young gentleman came to, a detec to the detective asking him to locate her missing husband. The woman is photographed with that. This is Miss Vigil. Mrs. Vigil. What? What? From what I understand, you haven't returned home since the night before the inspector was found dead. Um... But of course, on that night, you were being held captive by the two red-headed league men. And last night, you were put up by the prosecution service in preparation for testifying in this trial. Because we've been led to believe that you, Miss Venus, and Mr. Sound were all homeless. Being important witnesses in this case, we need to know where we, where we could find you, of course. And that explains why you've not only been unable to return home, but also been unable to contact your wife. We've been beside herself with a worry waiting for you at the vigil residence. Now, now you just hold on a minute. I don't know the first idea what I'm talking about. Really? It's a simple enough matter to confirm my suspicions. All we have to do is pull off that disguise. No, but, but please. Bailiff, bring soap, a sponge, and a washboard at once. Mr. DeRosso, Mrs. Rossi, you will restrain the witness. We, oui, my lord. See, si, my lord. Yeah. No, stop. Get off.
Well, we are now seeing your true features, I presume. Lift your head, sir, so the court can see your face. It would appear that the defense's counsel assertion, counsel's assertion was entirely correct. This has all been a very elaborate deception. So, witnesses, tell the court. Have you seen this man before? I... I don't believe it, but... See, there is a no question. This... this uh, is in the aspect that we saw in the park. Extraordinary! On the day of the Red Headed League enrollment, the man claiming to be Inspector Direction who appeared to before Mr. DeRosso and Mr. DeRossi in court in the park. Was you disguised the Inspector, or rather, was you posing as the Inspector in no disguise at all? Mr. Vigil was formally employed as, ch as the Chief Warder at Barclay Prison. The Chief w Warder? Then your career had promise. Why, you would quite have possibly become the future governor of the prison. What on earth would you have been doing, doing peddling tittle-tattle on Fresno Street? Well, it's been ten years since Mr. Vigil worked at the prison. Ten years? I'm... I'm really dreadfully sorry about all of this. Yes, it's true. I am daily vigil. And you were the chief warder at Barclay Prison ten years ago? So, uh, where did Mr. Hugh Boone come from? Boone is the other me. It is a name I have invented. Well, evidently there was a great deal under the surface here. I'll explain everything. I'll tell you just how wretched my life has become. Well... Sorry to be that guy, but... I'm gonna stop here now. Yeah. <laughs> it's about like 50 minutes in and I'm pretty tired, so, uh, yeah. Um, where are we? 11, 11 or 9 here, yeah. So, next time, we're going to continue on and we're going to hear what exactly happened to Vigil, but Mr. Vigil, because I can't imagine any reason you'd just leave a prison just like that. I mean, I don't know. Anyways, uh, yeah. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.